sticking with what you know, if it ain't broke and all that. Trying to avoid get, having to get a proper job for as long as possible. Yeah, just 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 having a, a, a sight set, you know, and both your crosshairs aligning and just sticking to it, just like with anything in life, you know, just keep at it and uh, if you build it, they will come. Electronic, mu uh, electronic music, you know, it's the most probably the most saturated art form in history now, and um, you know it's getting easier and easier to make um, I suppose, mediocre, functional dance music. Is, is is literally just something. There's algorithms that practically do it for you and sample packs and all the rest of it. So I think it's probably a lot harder now to break through, but the market's a lot bigger now as well. But you can definitely make a, a living from from music. I mean, whether it's mastering mixing or engineering or, or producing or ghost producing or touring or DJing or live this or PR I mean it's the whole sort of ecosystem you've got to have that one hit wonder and one big record and stuff but I mean I think that's always been the, been the case because um, it doesn't really matter now you don't need to have a massive sort of 400 grand studio you can literally just have a laptop or even an iPad uh, music is so big now whereas I think 20 years ago you really had to like learn kit you need to save money it took a long time there was a lot of a lot more struggle whereas now and so much of it's so it's so important what happens online and what you look like and you know who you hang out and there's so much more to it than just making tunes now I thought I when I when I'm in the studio I yearn to tour and play and when I'm touring a lot and playing you have to be in the studio so it's it's like the grass is always greener isn't it I, I, I enjoy both so I mean it's that, it's different isn't it you see you get you're getting different different the swing of things differently you know when we were touring a lot I found it really hard to get back in the studio like I forgot how everything fucking worked do you know what I mean I, I, I couldn't I couldn't use the synths I couldn't use certain things I completely forget you know like half of like fucking like an octa track for example I mean like you it's like learning another language. You know, you've been on tour for months, come back in, you turn in and you're like, just completely forgotten it. And it's quite soul destroying. <laughs> it's spending hours, like spending a whole day trying to get a sound out of a synth that you used to be able to use well, you know. So you, I think it's, it's, it's hard to balance the two, you know. Um, we were touring really intensely though, do you know what I mean? So, and at that point, you know, studio, that's the thing, studio does take, take a back seat really you feel you're like trying to rush out a big hit well i think that's i think that's one of the biggest constraints that producers get is when they do have some success they they you, you know or, or or a record that does okay or whatever they try and emulate that and i think when you're starting off you know you do your all your best work at the beginning of a project when you're sort of almost trying to find where the edges of it are you know that's when like the really all of you know the really exciting stuff's always at the beginning and um and I, and I think, and then when you start touring, all these external things start coming into what you're doing and seeing how your record, you know, when you're making your first records, you don't know how they're going to work in clubs because you haven't got any gigs. So you're just sort of putting it, putting it out there and trying your hardest. And then suddenly you're like, oh, it works better if you break a record down like this in the middle or do this or this kind of bass line with that kind of hand. Yeah. And then suddenly that affects all your music and then your music starts being dictated to from things that are outside. And I, I found that I found that with tour, I found touring like almost like the enemy of the studio. Like I, I I couldn't be in the studio when I was touring really hard. I just you know too many kick drums. Making trying to make functional DJing music is is, is going to restrict you so much mentally, even subconsciously. You're not going to do things that are as exciting because you're going to think you're going to have to have this structure for the dance floor around it. I mean, I know probably for Alex and certainly for me, like one of the most creative times been over COVID. You know, like just because you've been in the studio so much. And, and when the more that you're in the studio, the more you learn your equipment and learn how they can relate to other things. And, and then everything starts being really fun again. I think when it's not really good fun in the studio, it's usually not going very well. And I think the thing is like, with en when I was doing engineering for other people, for example, you find something that works and then you sort of find yourself falling into that laziness of like, going, oh, well that worked last time, and, you know, and, 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 and I think, so even being in the studio for eight hours a day is not particularly helpful at all for me. I, I've realized recently, because I'm in the studio every day, is I'm much better off doing it in very short increments. So I'll, I'll drop my kids off, come and spend three hours in the studio, then go and get my kids, and then come back in the studio for another three hours. So breaking up in sort of two hour windows or three hour windows or even one hour windows is so much more 
productive for me than sitting there for eight hours, definitely. I, I have to really feel like I'm, I'm creatively that I want to be want to be in the studio. If I'm not feeling, if I don't, don't don't have the vibe. Writing music isn't a nine to five job, and and you know sometimes when you like when you're not gigging or whatever, you think oh, I need to get in the studio with a coffee at nine in the morning and sit there till six at night as if I've got a day job yeah. kind of thing. No, but no, that no. that is not you know it's not like you know the monkeys they'll eventually they'll write Shakespeare. It's like I'm much better at sort of being in it, being in or being in as well. But be, be, jumping jumping in and out, and it also gives you um, you know distance from it. So you can sort of come back and go, oh God, that sounds shit. Or actually, that sounds right. But you don't get that if you're really up close to it all the time. It's quite hard to... You get so insulated in, in, in the, the surrounds you're in like now and here, you, know, you, can, you can really convince yourself that something's brilliant. And, you, and once you step away and listen to it in a different environment, you can be like, hang on, that's fucking rubbish. So that's really important to sort of to be able to step away and listen to things in different environments, um, you know. And it's the same, and, that, and, and it, this relates back to the whole sort of writing music just for clubs. Is you, you've got to think more about how, you know, would I would I listen to this outside of a club? You know, would I listen to with other people listen to it outside of the club? Yeah. To be to be fair, I mean, you shouldn't really give a shit what other people what what other people think of your music anyway. You should just completely write it for yourself. Do you know what I mean? No, don't, you know, don't ever think, oh, you know, such and such will like this and such. Like, it's bullshit because that's not art, you know. You know, the great artists do it just for themselves and people either buy into it or they don't. And if they don't like it, fuck them. That's the way you've got to go about it. Simple as that. Do you remember when we were in Bergheim and that geezer started yeah, self affixing no, the geezer started self affixing himself with a belt around his neck, chained himself to, to the DJ booth in Bergheim. Just, he was naked and strangling himself with a belt. That was that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> pretty top shelf stuff's happened over the last ten years. The other thing is like, aside from studios and making tunes, you're basically going on a stag do every weekend with your mate. You know, and there's t it's worse when there's two of you and you've got you know similar interests and sense of humour. You know, you do end up just sort of enjoying yeah. it a lot. We've been in some very spicy, stupid situations, but very, very, very funny. The thing, at, at, the, at the time, we were just like, what the hell's going on? This is well, mental. Like, I can't no, believe this is happening. Like but looking back, yeah. it's amazing. Look, you know, in 20 years, I'll look back on it and think. It's, it's so intense. It was so intense and so, just so bizarre, the stuff we used to see and do constantly. It was quite hard to stop, you know, like, just, you know, with COVID here, and we're just like indoors going, right. And it's all, and we left, we left our, you know, because we're a bit older now. So we left, it, 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 I, I mean, we certainly, I think, I feel a lot more mature now. 20 year old when you're 40. Yeah. Whereas like now that we've been at home two years, we actually are 40. Bowie. Oh, oh really, we're, we're going that big. Okay. <laughs> Michael Jackson, Prince. Uh, yeah. Right, said, yeah, said Fred. Bowie. Next. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Right. I can't beat Bowie. There you go. He win. He's won. Yeah, I win. It's a bit like Top Trumps, this, isn't it? We've got loads on Needy Pains coming up. Loads of great artists. Um, we've got some loads of. Yeah, we've got Levon Vincent remix of us coming about to drop. We've got Function remix of us about to drop on there. We've got uh, some we're signing to a new label that we haven't been, which we we haven't released on a new label for fucking yonks. So this will be interesting. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep that one under our hat for a little bit until it's all done and dusted. I tell you, we've got some really good. Yeah, we've got a lot of remixes of us. Um, we've got a really good one from um, Moody Mank. Two of them actually. Or D Double D. No, whichever he goes by. Um, that's interesting. We've got some stuff from Dub oh, remix of Dubfire from um, Will Clark and um, and uh, Lucid. We've got that's what we've got. It's exciting. A Sagittarian stuff from him. Um, we've got Risa Tanaguchi. Is it? I can't remember what her name is. We got. I mean, I, I mean, lots, lots. It's all really good. Obviously, you know, because kind of, we're not on the on the road. After well, we're getting back, but you know, it's not. We haven't been, so we've sort of been trying to express ourselves musically through the label. Um, yeah, and then obviously me and Chris have been writing tunes. 
the cogs keep turning, the show keeps rolling, etc. Who says that? <laughs>